Hey guys, I got another Yeti SB120 review. It's November 2022. It's been a fun, uh, fun week and a half of riding this bike, riding with other kind of short travel 29er trail bikes uh, that are in the same category, along with uh, its predecessor, the Yeti SB115. And you know, when Yeti first came out with the Yeti SB100, which lasted for a year, a year and a half or so, maybe two years. Then they came out with the SB115, which is very similar to the 100 that, uh, before it. And now, of course, we progressed onto the 120. Um, but when Yeti came out with that bike, it was kind of um, it was kind of introduced to the mountain bike community as like the down country bike, which I, I hadn't really heard that term down country kind of like cross country meets trail bike is what I think they were doing. Anyway, I didn't love the term when it came out. It kind of looked like a cross country-ish bike to me, uh, but Yeti wanted to be cool. They put like uh, they put like the big burly tires on it, which for me, as soon as I got the bike, I took those tires off. This bike also came with really burly tires. And of course I took them off. I don't need downhill tires on my short travel trail bike. That's just me. But uh, I like riding the Recon by Maxxis on these tires, but uh, the bike was so much fun. I guess me saying that Yeti came out with the down country idea maybe sounded like a negative just now. My point is I loved the Yeti SB100 when it came out. And then again, when the 115 came out, it's just such a fun bike. And mountain biking is supposed to be fun, right? Um, so for me, I, I, I love that bike. In fact, I remember telling Chris, the owner of Salt Cycles, where I get all these bikes and who kind of helps support my channel by getting me bikes to review. I remember telling him, he asked me probably a year ago, maybe a little more than a year ago. He said, Jason, what is your favorite bike you've ridden in the last five, five and a half years you've been doing YouTube? I said, probably that Yeti SB100, which is almost identical to the 115. And it really is. It's just such a rewarding bike to ride. I progressed from the SB100 onto the Ibis Ripley, which I rode for a couple seasons. It's just, that is just such a fun bike. I haven't ridden the Yeti SB115, geez, in probably more than two years, I'd bet. But I've ridden it a couple times in the last week and it has just put a smile on my fa face every time I ride that bike. It's a very rewarding bike to ride. I can totally understand why Yeti has taken their time and kind of been slow about introducing their next bike into this category because a short travel 29er trail bike is probably the fattest category of mountain bike riders out there. There's probably more people on bikes like this than maybe any other category in mountain biking. I could be wrong. I'm a 40 year old dad. I've got three kids. I ride mountain bikes with my daughter on the middle school mountain bike team. So maybe I just see a lot of people on short travel 29ers. But this is a strong category, whether it's the biggest category or not, it's a very strong category. And I understand why they took their time introducing this bike to the world. Um, well, what changed real quick, just comparing the two bikes back and back. The SB115 had a 67 and a half degree head tube angle. At the time when that bike came out, that was for a cross country, a short travel trail bike, that was getting slacker, but the Ripley came out right afterwards with a 66 and a half degree head tube angle and just made the, the bike go downhill a little bit better, right? And it still climbed really well. Well, this bike got the same head angle, 66 and a half as the Ripley. So we go from 67 and a half degree head tube angle to 66 and a half. And then the, the seat angle on the SB115 is 74 degrees. So it's, you know, slightly not, you know, slacker. The new seat tube angle on this bike is 76 and a half, which is that's to me that 76 and a half degrees is about perfect. I'm five foot eight. Uh, I ride size medium bikes that usually fit me just perfect. I have 50 millimeter stems on both of these bikes and they just fit perfect. The reach numbers, this is the crazy part. You cannot purchase a bike in 2022 going off of reach numbers anymore. Just, it doesn't make any sense because the reach numbers on the SB115 is 429 millimeters. This bike is 455 millimeters. But when you pop that seat up and you measure and I've got the seat on the rails in the same spot of both these bikes. I've been riding these bikes back to back for the last week. Measuring from the center of the steer tube to the tip of my saddle, which these have the exact same saddle on. That bike, even though it's a, a 429 reach, and this is a 455 millimeter reach, that bike is 17 millimeters longer than this bike because it has such a steeper seat tube angle. So 
Just because it says it has a bigger reach doesn't mean it's not going to fit you or it's going to fit you. Try to go sit on these bikes. If that SB115, let's say you're a current owner of an SB115, you're wondering if you should be buying the SB120, uh, it'll fit you just fine. In fact, this will be slightly more compact than the previous generation. I've talked way too much about the numbers so far. Let's talk about how this bike compares to the old bike out on the trail. It's all new. Everything is a more modern bike. It has size specific chain stay lengths. Uh, the, chain stay, the chain stays on this bike got a little shorter than the previous model. And they don't feel anything alike at all. This feels more stable, more composed at higher speeds not as twitchy feeling as that bike. It feels like it can go handle a lot more variety of trails better. It also has a very um, easygoing natural riding position um, compared to like say the SB130 that this, this bike I really feel like is just getting closer to that old Yeti SB130. And it almost feels more like that bike than it does the previous SB115. The SB115, has better slow speed trail manners, which means it's more rewarding to ride at slower speeds. It's more zippy feeling. It's just more energetic and lively. Um, I actually do think that this bike feels like has it more support under pedal load than the previous um, generation, but all of these Yeti Switch Infinity suspension systems feel so good when you just first get on them and start cranking away on those pedals. Just very rewarding. You just feel like you're just rocketing up the hill. Um, this bike's quite a bit heavier than the previous SB115. Um, so I think I totally get why they, they are going the direction they're going with the 120. It's going to open up more trails to more people and make people feel more comfortable on those trails. If I was picking today, <laughs> if I was picking today, I think I might actually like the SB115 better which I know sounds crazy. Um, I just think I, I had so much fun riding that bike. That bike rides more like the Ibis Ripley, which is my favorite short travel tw uh, 29er trail bike. Um, and I get it as a 67 and a half degree head tube angle, which is kind of steep by today's standards. I mean, lots of bikes, even trail bikes are getting 64 and a half and 65 degree head tube angles. So 67 and a half is pretty steep, I, 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 you know, there's no, no doubt about that. There is some bias here too. So you should probably know it. If you don't follow my channel, my name is Jason. I try to review as many bikes as I can get my hands on. This is a category I specifically spend a lot of time in, this short travel 29er category. But you should probably know that I've been riding an Ibis XE for the last year. I probably put 1,500 miles on my Ibis XE this season. Uh, so, and I love that bike. And it happens to have a 67 and a half degree head tube angle. And it has a very similar seat tube angle as this bike. So, so I kind of, every review is going to have a little bit of bias in it. I try to remove my personal bias as best as I can, but I love my Ibis XE. It's a real cross country bike that can still go downhill very well. That's, uh, that's that bike. So if you're a dad, who doesn't maybe race cross country because it's not like a hardcore cross country bike. It's, it's actually the SB115 is kind of heavy for a, a purebred cross country bike, like comparing to my Ibis XE, for example. But if you're a guy like I, I ride a lot of mountain bikes with the with the youth in our community because I ride with the high school and the middle school. And if you're a guy who's going to go ride with the high school, you need a bike that's fast and efficient to keep up with those high school kids and middle school kids. That bike could do it. You know, you put on some, I, I put on, these are actually my daughter's wheels. So th that bike came with these really heavy aluminum wheels. And this bike happened to have these carbon wheels. So for the comparison, I took the aluminum wheels off and put those custom carbon salt cycles wheels that you can call Chris at Salt Cycles and order some. They're amazing. But those are my daughter's wheels. I took them off of her race bike and put them on this just for the last couple days, you know, riding these bikes. That's a bike, that SB115 is a bike that you could go and really, um, you could even go race some midweek series race and, and, and enjoy yourself. It's just a very rewarding bike to ride when you just really get on the pedals and put your head down and start 
hammering away for 45 minutes, it's a very rewarding bike. Um, it feels a little bit longer, even though the numbers don't look longer, it actually does feel longer and more comfortable for cruising. That's more of a cross country bike, you know, than this. Um, maybe this is the down country bike uh, Yeti was talking about three years ago, because um, maybe this is more down country. I think it's just a trail bike, but I think if you want to cover the most amount of ground, SB120 will probably cover more ground than that bike. You know, you'll be more comfortable, more composed, feel more confident on this bike. If you're going to race a little bit, or maybe you have a high school kid who he's serious about racing, but he still likes to have some fun, that's going to be better than maybe some purebred, like actual cross country bikes. Like a, the things that come to mind is like a Cannondale Scalpel or the, um, uh, the uh, Specialized uh, Epic. Uh, that will be more fun than those bikes, right? I hope I've done a good job of kind of comparing these bikes. Just in a few words, more zippy, maybe a little more twitchy than this bike, more responsive to the trail and more rewarding to ride at slower speeds. This one, more neutral, more trail riding, more composed at higher speeds, heavier. Um, I'm kind of a weight wiener. I like, I like lightweight bikes. My, my Ibis XC is uh, under 22 pounds, full suspension bike, you know. So uh, I would maybe gravitate toward, toward that one. The other good news is bikes are getting very expensive. And so being able to call Chris or Jason or Courtney at Salt Cycles and say, hey, do you guys have any of those SB115s left over? And they'll say, yes. In fact, they're up to 25% off right now. So for me, I like money in my pocket. <laughs> so you're gonna get up to 25% off of a Yeti SB115. They also have Yeti SB130s up to 25% off as well, left over since the new 140 just came out and the new 120 just came out. So call Chris and you can order a new 120 today, fully customize it or save a little money, get the previous generation. Um, there's a guy in our neighborhood actually who just uh, reached out to me and said, hey, I need to get a bike this, this more long travel trail bike, this 140 mil travel trail bike that he's been riding is not keeping up with his son on the high school mountain biking team that he rides with twice a week. He says, I need something more efficient but can still go do trail duty. That's the bike I told him to do. I said, call Chris, he'll give you a screaming deal on a, on a SB1, uh, 115 right now. So that's the direction I'd go. I do like the, the updated, kind of modern bits. You can see the rear triangle is completely different on the 120 than it is on the previous 115 and 100. The Switch Infinity Link is updated. I mean, it's a more modern updated bike. I, I, I get that, but it also got a little heavier. So I think that's where my money would go over there. But this is a very cool bike too. I hope you guys like this video. I'm gonna to try to do some more head-to-head -head comparisons as the uh, as we get into spring. I mean, it's November of 2022, so it's it's winter. My wife and I actually went skiing today. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed riding these bikes this week. I enjoyed riding the 120. I know I'm not maybe as stoked on it as maybe some other bikes, um, including the 115, but uh, it's a great time to be a mountain biker. So many good options and uh, <sighs> And Salt Cycles can custom build your bike and, and make it just the way you want it. And so give them a call. They're a great support of the channel. That's a great way for you to support the channel if what I'm doing uh, speaks to you or is helpful to you in any way. Um, I enjoy, you know, producing this uh, YouTube channel. And uh, I, I appreciate any support I get either from clicking the links down below to start your shopping for a mountain bike uh, product. Those are affiliate links that directly go to support me and my channel and what I'm doing here, or by purchasing your bike or parts from Salt Cycles. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, leave a comment down below. If you ride an SB115, maybe weigh in in the comments down below. People always love to hear other people's experiences, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.